So the next question is something I think all of us are very passionate about with our work. Last year, despite the demands of hundreds of hundreds of multicultural Tampa residents to defund the police and refund the community, our city elected officials all voted unanimously to give them an additional 13 million on top of their previous year's budget. Despite that, the, the very minuscule ask that the ACLU has made to make the Tampa Police Department even just a sliver more accountable with the Citizen Review Board is so controversial, so much so that PBA President Darla Portman has uh, written a scathing review about the city council saying that they're politicizing police accountability for lack of better words. Now, of course, I have very long history, very long history of controversial opinions regarding Tampa Police Department. Um, but I would really like to hear from you, especially, uh, well, all of you, of course, but Razelle, I know this is something that you worked with very closely last year was uh, mechanisms of accountability. What are your thoughts on the PBA uh, decision to act as though a small inch of accountability is essentially the most radical meltdown uh, Tampa has ever seen? How do you feel about their reaction and how do you feel about the lack of accountability in TPD in general? It's definitely an overreaction. When you think of, of the city council, they should not be loyal to any one group, any one organization. It's just it's just for the people, you know, and they're elected officials by the people, and that is everyone in total. And when it comes to the PBA stance, it just seems like they show up only whenever the odds are against it. But whenever things are looking like they're being challenged, then they have to come. And now they're all, all of a sudden they're speaking up and speaking out. Yeah, I just think whenever their number is called, they just come with the same excuse that like, this is unconstitutional and this is not right and all this stuff. And there's no real evidence for that. They're asking for a CRB that actually has teeth, that actually has power to subpoena. And that's like something that everyone should want because a CRB is neutral and it should really look at these cases, whatever's brought to them and say, what went wrong, if anything went wrong. It isn't an attack on the police. It isn't singling out the police. It's just holding people accountable and making sure the right thing happens, like justice is served. Overall, the people want transparency and they want accountability. And the only way you can get that is with a neutral and just system. That's true. And Katie, did you have some thoughts on the recent um, PBA and CRB issue? Yeah, I always ask, what is the bad thing about accountability, right? Like, what is the bad thing about oversight, right? I don't really understand why, I don't even want to say like police officers, but even police officers and I would say police officer adjacent, like the people who are like just so proud of police officers or whatever, like, I don't understand what is the the problem with oversight and, and accountability. There's so much pushback from accountability and I don't really understand. Most businesses have audits, whether uh, through your company or an outside company. So I don't understand like what's so wrong about making sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And my only thing is that you know you're not or you know that somebody isn't, right? And there is power when there's somebody within your organization that may not be always dotting their I's or always crossing their T's, but you have oversight over that, right? You know that X, Y, and Z isn't always perfect, but because you're the only one that can really like oversee that, that's fine because you can decide when and when to, and when not to check them. But if you have somebody out that's neutral, they're going to, they're going to either make sure you check them or they're going to remove you for not checking them, right? With this PBA thing, I don't understand why, like, there's so much pushback saying that, you know, you're bringing politics into policing. Let's be realistic. Everything is political, right? Whether you like it or not, a lot of this is political. It's kind of like when people say, oh, like, why are you always bringing Blackness into this? Because a lot of this is anti-Black. A lot of a lot of these systems are anti-Black. They're, they're anti-everything. There's a lot of isms. There's a lot of phobias that have wrapped into this white supremacist world. And it's like, at the end of the day, you're either going to acknowledge it and work towards dismantling it, or you're going to keep being blind and a lot of people keep getting hurt. Right. And that's and this is what's happening. And I agree with Rizel. Um, These same people aren't showing up to nothing else unless it concerns the police in terms of it's making the police so bad. It's like if you're really for the community, where are you or you at over anything? You need to be here when the police is doing great and when the police isn't doing anything. I mean, at the end of the day, I personally I don't really care for the police because I feel like there's nothing that the police do that we can't do ourselves. Right. In my opinion, police don't protect people. 
like people protect people. I just don't understand. That's my that's my whole that's my whole gripe with this is what's the pushback with accountability. And if you want to be hold yourself accountable, well, you're not obviously doing that correctly. There's so many people that's like police adjacent that has so much to say. And it's just like so crazy to me because I I don't know, maybe maybe I'm I'm new to this because like I feel like people were not as adamant to be advocates for police until like recently. I don't know if police ever had like this much support, but I feel like the, the support for law enforcement came within like the last year. I don't remember back to blue back in the day when I was in like high school or middle school. I don't remember these organizations. So it's kind of crazy how like they're coming out of the woodworks and it's just like, like, where have you been? Because a lot of these organizations that are advocating um, for accountability or even for not policing or alternatives to policing have been around for years preaching the same thing. You have people talking about years of lack of accountability, years of lack of oversight. Who are you to denounce years of problems? And then you bring up a problem, but you don't bring up a solution. If you don't want accountability, well, what do you want? Where can we compromise on this, right? There's no communication with these people. There's like, like all right, cool. We don't want that. Okay. Well, what would you have instead? Right. There's nothing. So it's like, you clearly don't want to have a discussion. You do, you clearly not trying to meet in the middle. And to your point, I mean, RJC has been doing this work for at least four years and there's always been police supporters, but you're right. They were never organized in this way. And I think their organization is a sign that we might be winning. Mary Liz, you want to bring that home? Absolutely. Katie and Roselle, you brought up some really, really great points. And really with the Citizens Review Board, I think it was intended to, you know, really put TPD in check and really ensure that voices were heard and that action was starting to happen. But right now it just feels like the Citizens Review Board is kind of a facade, you know? It just feels like it's not fulfilling its purpose. It seems like there's some limitations as to what the people can do. I think the Citizens Review Board just needs to be improved as to what, what the initial roles are and, and how far they can go because if it's not going to really make any difference in, in being able to hold police officers accountable when they've done something wrong, then maybe it needs to be disbanded. If it's not serving its purpose, then what, what are we going to do? Like we, we need a Citizens Review Board that is taken seriously and promotes justice. I feel that the Citizens Review Board needs to be re-looked at and, and definitely approved upon as far as like what level of power they have. Otherwise, you know, it, it's not fulfilling its purpose. Thank you all so much for this insight and for informing the um, viewers. Katie, did you have a point you wanted to make? I wanted to add on onto that because I agree. Uh, so from my understanding, uh, the Citizen Review Board is um, allowed to review um, cases after um, the police are. Um, so from my understanding, the Citizen Review Board is allowed to review cases after the police or internal affairs already have reviewed and made a decision. So it's like, I've always had like a, a misunderstanding of that because it's just like, all right, cool. So there's some, there's obviously some discrepancy because I had to get involved, right? So you obviously know that something happened. They only get involved when there's like misconduct or, or something like that. So you're allowing them to conduct their own investigation, um, make rule on that investigation and then close the case and then you can finally review it. So it's like, after all that's done, if that's like, if that's the case or how it's done, what purpose do you serve? You're reviewing documents that has already been, in a sense, complete. How I think of it, maybe, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I, I need to um, look more into it, is if there's a court case going on and then uh, the jurors come in and they, uh, and the judge like announce if the person is guilty or not guilty, and then you just get a rundown of that. And then you, go, then you also voice, oh, well, this should have been this or this should have been that. But you can't really do nothing because the case is already closed. It isn't like you can reopen it, right? I agree with Mary Elizabeth. Like, there definitely needs to be more oversight or more powers to them. And I, and I think that the subpoena powers is a great addition to that or at least moving in that direction. Because if you're just reviewing cases that's already been closed, like what purpose do you serve? And I agree. If you serve no purpose, you're just there for face, right? And we don't need we don't need nobody for face. We need people that's actually doing work. If you're not doing work, then I agree with Mary Elizabeth. Then just don't be there because you're just taking up space and you're providing a facade to people that think that you're really working for them, but you're not. Exactly. Damn, that's so true. I remember when it was formed um, by Bob Buckhorn back in 15, and it was always designed to be the facade that it is. So we're not trying to fix it. We're trying to break it because it's doing what it was intended to do, which was nothing.